All right. So, uh, just want to say Shabbat Shalom to everybody. All praises to the Most High for another blessed Shabbat. Um, you know, um, we're going to do this study tonight titled, Are We Content? And, um, you know, the Bible tells us to provoke one another onto good works, um, to, to stay encouraged, to continue doing the things that the Most High set us up to do. And, um, you know, to keep the fear of the Most High, which is a healthy fear, to allow us to propel um, one another forward, you know, uh, step by step. So, you know, this is a real good question to uh, ask ourselves, you know what I mean? Everybody has to work out their own salvation with fear and tremblings. Um, but this is a beautiful question to check, you know, where we at with the things that we're doing and, um you know, storing up our treasures in the kingdom. You know what I mean? Shabbat Shalom. You know, we have to store up our, our, our treasures in the kingdom to come. So, you know, this is a good way um, to, to to gauge where we at. You know what I mean? And um, to see um, if we locking in like we supposed to. And this is a very important thing that we do this. You know, when we're talking about building um, Salaki, when we're talking about helping build a kingdom to come you know it's a good thing for um, all of us that are, are um, attentive to the most high's laws and commandments that want to make it into this kingdom it's a very important thing for us to all try to pick up something you know pick anything that needs to be done let's let's let the, the business of our father be handled very seriously you know let it let, let's all focus on um, the main goal and that's for this uh, kingdom to come um, by us all putting our hands in and, and helping you do this thing you know what I mean let's not be stagnant let's not um, you know uh, fall back to sleep or or let the, the ways of the world kind of you know overshadow the righteous work that we should be doing you know if, if, when we talk about our father's kingdom Every man pick up something, pick up a broom, another get the dustpan, you know, another person do the dishes. Let's all put our hands in and make this thing work, you know what I mean, for uh, for the, the outcome of it to be beautiful, you know. So um, just putting that out there, man, and, you know, we got to stay encouraged, okay. So uh, Are We Content is the title of this study, and I'm going to start off in Revelation 3 and 15, okay. Revelation 3.15, and it, it, it reads right here. It says, I know thy works, that thou art neither hot, uh, cold nor hot. Um, I would thou wert cold or hot, right? So it would be better to either be cold or hot, right? One or the other, right? So either you're all the way um, invested in this or you're all the way not invested in it you know not not kind of like kind of like invested in it you know what i mean um verse 16 it says so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot i will spew thee out of my mouth so you know when we're looking at and this is red letter in the book of revelation the savior would prefer to us to, to either be hot or cold you know, that lukewarm stuff, he's not really feeling it. You know what I mean? And I can understand why, because it's kind of, it's, it's, it's wavering. You know what I mean? And the thing is, is uh, we all striving for greatness and trying to make it into this kingdom. But the thing is, is like when we're all alone, are we do we still have that same mindset? Are we still locking in on what it is that we should be doing? Um, are we still focused on the next step? You know, um... Well, what's the righteous works? You know, uh, putting suggestions out there, trying to build with one another, you know, uh, brothers and sisters talking with one another on how we can do certain things. Even if everybody else is not involved, just a little, every little bit counts. You know what I mean? And this is stuff that's good. And I'm just trying to encourage, um, you, know, uh, our, you know, us as a family. Um, and this is encouragement for myself as well. You know, a lot of times um, I just look at um, what I could be doing instead of things that I'm not doing. You know what I mean? If I, if this, uh, so pretty much what I'm saying is uh, 
if there's something that I I can do to help out with anything, so be it. Why not? You know what I mean? Um, and I, you know, I just want to tell the brothers and sisters, man, let's let's all try to come together and really help build this uh, this this thing of ours that the Most High is setting up for for our salvation. You know what I mean? Um, I'm gonna go to Proverbs six and sixteen. Again, the title of this is "Are Are We Content?" You know, because remember, um, uh, he that endureth to the end shall be saved. You know what I mean? Let's not let's not get stagnant. All right. So this is Proverbs six and sixteen, and it reads, um, "These six things doeth the Lord hate; yea, seven are an abomination unto him: a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood." A heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord amongst brethren. So when I come here, you're probably like, well, why did you come here? Well, there's certain things that's mentioned here that I think is very significant when we're asking ourselves, are we content? Right? Um, you know, a, a proud look, right? Now, it, it doesn't always have to be a, a, a facial expression. It could just be how you carry yourself, right? We're not in this kingdom yet. You know what I mean? Um, the Bible says faith without works is dead. So um, it also says he that endured to the end shall be saved. So clearly there's work to be done until Yeshua returns. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it's never, it's never enough. Just look at anything that you wanted in the world, um, whether it is whatever kind of goals you set for yourself, you always strove hard and continue to build on it um, to get to what you wanted. You know what I mean? Same thing with this kingdom, and we need to um, strive for this. You know what I mean? Um, so that's one of the main reasons why I brought it here. It also says, uh, feet that be sw uh, swift, um, and run into mischief. You know what I'm saying? We got to be mindful too because we know that uh, a friend of the world is enmity with the Most High. And a lot of things that the world shows us because the earth is in the hands of the wicked is mischievous doings of the flesh. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times we'll, we'll be willing to do something that's fleshly before it's something spiritual. And this is just as a people as a whole, not just uh, people that are awoke, but the, the natural man, period. You know what I mean? Because of the way we've been programmed to think, the way we've been programmed to act. So, you know, um, these things are good things to keep an eye on. You know what I mean? Um, so, you know, we, we can't fall content. Uh, I'm going to get uh, Matthew 18 and 3. Matthew 18 and 3. Again, man, we just got to stay encouraged, man. And, um, you know. And know why I speak against the truth. You know what I mean? So, you know, always gauge ourselves. You know, look look at how we're doing things. Look at what we're doing. And always ask yourself, can we do more? Uh, can we be better? You know what I mean? And these kind of things will allow us to, to, to build on where we're at already. You know what I mean? Um, we don't, what we don't want to do is plateau. You know what I mean? Continue to read, continue to study, continue to build, continue to uh, fellowship. All these things, you know what I mean? Um, one, of the, one of the things that really hurt my heart is when you see your brothers and sisters wake up um, or it be somebody that just probably woke up to the truth and they don't really build their spirit. You know what I mean? They just know of the truth and then that's that, you know? Um, and, you know, their mind... It's still, they still want to make it to the kingdom, but they're not, you know, like a, a, a bodybuilder doesn't just say he wants to be Mr. Universe, you know what I'm saying? He continues to work on his body until, you know, he's able to achieve that goal. It's the same thing with this. You know, you say you want the kingdom. We want the kingdom. We want to make it into the kingdom. We have to continue to work until the kingdom come and we reach that goal, you know, so... You know, it's just just words of encouragement, you know, and, and uh, a, a minute of reflection, you know. So um, Matthew 18 and 3, it reads, uh, And said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted 
and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Well, I'm bringing this up because when we're talking about being content, you know, if you ever watch how children operate, you know, you can tell, you can tell a child something and they will take in what you're saying. We all need to be that way with one another because nobody wants to uh, be a stumbling block to nobody else. Nobody wants to see another person doing bad. And if they if they are or if they do, according to the scriptures, they're still in darkness even until now. You know what I mean? Um, and what I'm saying is we should be able to tell each other some things. Um, you might not always want to hear it, but you know, once it's coming from a truthful place and a righteous place to provoke on the good works, you know, we should be as little children and receive that. You know what I mean? Um, you know, if you tell a little child like, hey, don't touch the oven, it's hot. They're going to be so attentive to what you're saying because they don't want to get burned, you know. Um, but in, in reality, they're, they're going to talk to you. They're going to tell you the truth, too. You know what I mean? So it's a two way street, you know. And, um, you know, just saying, man, at the end of the day, we should be able to hear each other very clearly and receive good information. You know what I mean? Um, test these spirits, of course, but always let's let's hear each other out. You know what I mean? Let's provoke each other on the good works. You see children playing in the park. You can't run faster than me. Oh yes, I could, but it's all within a beautiful spirit of 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 unity. You know what I'm saying? They're enjoying each other. You know, um, and it's not a, it's not about a competition thing. What I am saying is that's them pro provoking each other on the good works. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, just us having conversations, iron sharp and iron, we all want to win. That's all I'm saying. Uh, let's go to uh, Proverbs 28 and 19. This is a very uh, powerful scripture right here because um, it just shows that we're not really supposed to be stagnant. Man. Proverbs 28 and 19. I used a, a, the example of a, a weightlifter, right? If a weightlifter stops working out, he gets muscle dystrophy, right? Basically, uh, he starts to lose everything he, 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 he was trying to work on, you know. And, you know, just let's just try to be as strong as we can in this thing. And um, the stronger we get, let's try to help each other get stronger too. All right, so Proverbs 28 and 19, it reads... Uh, he that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread, right? But he that followeth after vain persons shall have poverty enough, right? So we see a lot of, uh, you know, um, when you look at certain things, you, you might see um, people talking about this or whatever the case is, and, they, you know, they might make it seem easy. That's not what I'm trying to say, right? What I am saying is that we need to till this land. We need to till this ground. We need to get our hands submerged in the work of the Most High. So when the harvest is full and he comes back for the harvest, that we have plenty full to give back to him. You know what I mean? We have, uh, he, he sees that we were, we were in his fields working, trying to make sure that the harvest is full when he comes back. You know what I mean? That's what I'm trying to say, you know? So uh, Proverbs 28 and 19, he that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread, all right? Um, but he that followeth after vain persons shall have poverty enough. Nobody has it all figured out. Um, nobody, um, you know, has a, a, a golden ticket straight into the kingdom. We all have to work for it. So, you know, anybody that may come off that way or make it seem like that's what they got and, you know, they above that situation, you know, uh, of doing the work, then, you know, we have to really understand what we see in there. You know, we try those spirits, man, because he, um, I'll say it again, he that endure till the end shall be saved, right? That's according to scripture. So, <clears throat> so uh, next I'm going to go to 1 John 2 and 16. Again, the title of this study is Are We Content? Right? Uh, we got we to gotta work for this thing. 1 John 2.16. And that reads, um, 
for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. You know, so we're supposed to be locking in on these uh, spiritual things, the kingdom to come. Right. These are the things that we should be setting our mind on. A lot of times we tend to set our minds on worldly things um, and only focus on uh, certain things when it when it comes to our, our across our path, like the Sabbath or, um, you know, sundown on a Friday when the Sabbath first kick in. That's it's, it's more to it than that. You know what I'm saying? This thing is a constant thing. It's, it's, it's a way of life. You know, and we, we all have to hold each other accountable in those kind of ways, you know. Um, you know, reach out to your brother, reach out to your sister, call him. Hey, how you doing? Hey, what you doing? Da, da, da. You know, it's a family thing, you know. Um, these kind of things allows us to be um, stronger as a people, allows us to, to engage more in work, in the work of the kingdom to come. You know, so um, again, First John 2 and 16 it says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the, the, the pride of life is not of the father, but of the world. So we're supposed to be focusing on the on, on the, the spiritual works, you know what I mean? And trying to get that in so much, you know, um, a lot of us, uh, you know, we, we got jobs to do throughout the week and stuff like that. That's all right. But we got to make sure we spend time with the father, too. You know, we got to make sure we crack open that Bible and soak in that word. You know, um, we got to continue to lock in all praises to the most high. You know, so, you know, all in all, man, we love one another. I know we love the most high. Let's not get content and plateau whatsoever, man. Let's continue to try to, um, you know, reach another level in, 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 in the works that we got to do, you know. And again, let's all let's all uh, pick up a broom. Let's all pick up something and do something towards the kingdom. All right. Um, so we're gonna go to Hebrews four fifteen. All right. So Hebrews four fifteen. Um. So uh. I see the question that you just asked. You can read uh, Exodus three fifteen, and it'll tell you. All right, and in Hebrew, it's a uh, higher, a higher, a higher. All right, um, Hebrews four fifteen, and that reads, um, "For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we, like as as we are." yet without sin. Okay. It says, let us therefore come boldly onto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. All right. So right here, I was focusing on verse 15, where it says, for we have not a high priest that which cannot be touched, uh, which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. So what I'm saying here is very clear that you can see that um, even Christ faced a lot of the stuff that we're facing right now. Right. He had to deal with um, worldly things that came across his path, but he still focused on the spiritual. And that's what we have to do, too. You know, um, I was having a conversation with my wife uh, it was a couple of weeks ago about things that I, I found to be a distraction. And she said something real powerful to me. What she said was, is that, um, you know, there's always going to be distractions, but it's, it's where your focus is. You know what I mean? Um, I'm paraphrasing how she said it, but it was towards that effect. And, um, you know, that was a powerful one for me because there's always going to be something that the serpent's going to put in your way to distract you, to keep you from focusing on the things to do. But, it's not about the distractions. It's about our focus. You know what I mean? And let's 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 sharpen our focus. All right. So yeah, man, this is a beautiful scripture right here, man, because it shows you that when when Christ came um, upon the earth, he did face a lot of the things that we um, that may be uh, uh, what we call problems today. All right. Um, shalom, shalom. So next, I'm gonna go to uh, Hebrews three and twelve. You know, 
let's not get content, man. Let's let's really continue to sharpen one another and um, you know, uh, hand over hand, man. Let's let's do this work together. So this is Hebrews three and twelve, and it reads, uh, uh, "Take heed, brethren." Lest there be any uh, be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living power, right? So, you know, when we're talking about being content, you know, understand that we none of us have gotten that green light, um, you know. And when we're talking about unbelief, you got people who don't, you know, even focus on this walk at all. You know what I mean? People who uh believe in God but don't not willing to do anything to 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 propel themselves towards him you know and it's good to sit down and talk with them that's another area of work that we could be doing right talking to people who might not have a a a, a clear understanding of what it is that um brings salvation you know what i mean so when it says, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from uh, from the living God, we got to make sure that our, our actions draw us to him and not away from him. You know what I mean? There's a thin line when you're talking about the spiritual and fleshly works. So we got to focus in on these works, storing up our treasures, getting closer to the most high, building with brothers and sisters. Um, you know, coming together as a community, as a family, keeping the love amongst each other and bearing one another's burden. You know, um, let's, I, I can't stress it enough, man. I, I don't want to see none of us getting content, you know, um, because that's not that that has turned us into a sluggard. You know what I'm saying? Which is another word for, you know, being lazy in the work. Um, I'm going to go to Titus 1 and 16. All right. Titus one sixteen. One second here. All right. So Titus one and sixteen. And this is a very powerful scripture because when we're talking about being content, understand that the things that we do again could either connect us to them or Disconnect us. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to read this here. Titus 1 and 16. It says, they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. Being abominable and disobedient and on to every good work reprobate. I'm going to read that again. All right. And understand what we're looking at here. Building up your treasures and doing what the most I say to do. You are showing that you understand him. You know who he is and you're trying to lock in with him. But you can, by not doing the work and not focusing on the works that the Most High set for us to do in this marathon, in this walk of life, in this building of the kingdom to come, by not doing the work, you you can be denying, you're denying the Most High. I'm going to read it again. Titus 1 and 16. They profess that they know God. They profess that they know a higher. They profess that they know the higher power, the most high creator of the heavens and earth. But in works, they deny him. All right. Being abominable and disobedient and on to every good work, reprobate. You know, so, you know, reprobate is when your mind's broken. You know, you don't want to think that you, you know, that we all the way in when we're not. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's all like, like, again, there's always something that can be done, you know? So my whole purpose on bringing this out is to rejuvenate our, uh, aggression towards making this thing happen, you know, towards, um, working on our salvation. Everything that you do that is considered a righteous work before the most high adds into your uh, blessing when there's judgment. You know what I mean? Why wouldn't you want to? You know? So, I'm going to go to uh, Jude 1 and uh, 18. Jude 1 and 18. Let me 
ね。All right, Salakia, Jude 1 and 18. It says,、uh, How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. Now, again, there's a thin line there. Either you're walking after the most high's、uh, ways of doing things or your own. You know what I mean? And we already know what, he, what it is that he's safe for us to do. We know what it is that he called us to do. It's to wake up the people. We are in the last days. Okay? We have to really proclaim to the world that salvation is at hand. It says right here,、uh, Titus, I mean, Salakia, Jude 1 and 18, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last times. When we talk about these kind of things, a lot of times people mock the truth. You know, they, they,、uh, they go against anything that is righteous. You know, So, it's a beautiful thing to be awoke and to be focused and to be doing the things that the Most High says because the wicked is going to mock the Most High, right? It says, Who should walk after their own ungodly lust? You know? So, what we're going to do is lock in on what the Most High wants us to do and not our own thing. You know, we understand what this walk is and we're focused. It's focused, all right?、Um, I'm going to go to.、Uh, 2 Peter 1 and 20. 2 Peter 1 and 20. Alright. So, we know that the Bible tells us very clear. Right? Faith without works is dead. Right? So, you could believe as much as you want. But how much, how much work are you putting in to what the Most High said to do? Right? How much,、uh, how much of your time is devoted to what the Most High set up for us to do? right? We are to, to,、uh, to proclaim the truth onto the world, right? To wake up these other nations and, and let them know that salvation is at hand, right? But,、um, you know, if we're not doing those things, you know, we should really take heed and be, be fearful, man. Fear of God is a healthy fear. I don't want to fight into it. All right, so、um, this is、uh, 2 Peter 1 and 20. It reads, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any、uh, private interpretation. So when he tells us to work, work towards the kingdom. You know what I'm saying?、Uh, store up your treasures in the kingdom.、Um, faith without works is dead. You can look at that however you want to, but the Scriptures already, through the precepts, we gain understanding. It tells us exactly. What that's about. You know what I'm saying? We have to work for this thing. Anything that's worth keeping, you have to work for. Same thing with this kingdom. You know what I mean? And,、um, you know, let's, 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 let's get it, man. So I'm going to go to、uh, James 1 and 27. Book of James 1 and 27. All right. So, James 1 and 27 reads right here. It says,、uh, Pure religion and undefiled,、um, and undefiled before a h i g h e r and the Father is this to visit the fatherless and widows to their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Right? So, the more you submerge yourself under the covering of the Most High, the more you keep yourself unspotted from the world. You know what I mean? The serpent wants to knock us down from the things that we are trying to push towards. We're trying to one day be、uh, standing in the before the glory of the Most High with eternal bodies, man, enjoying and not having to worry about the place of torment and all these other things. Let us focus on this kingdom. Let's focus on the work. It says pure religion. We know that this is our heritage. This is something that was given to us from our forefathers all the way to now, right? Pure religion and undefiled before our power. And the Father is this to visit the fatherless. These are all works right here. 
right? And the widows uh, in their affliction to keep himself unspot and to keep himself unspotted from the world. You know, we know that we got things like arms to do. Let's come together and do it. Um, you know, we get out there street preaching and stuff. Come show support. You know, um, we got flyers and stuff like that, man. Get some flyers, man. Hand it out to whoever, man. Sit down and talk with people. We got, uh, we could fellowship with each other. Give your brother or your sister a call. See what they doing on the Sabbath. See if we could come together, right? Um, throughout the week, crack that Bible open. Man, call up a brother or sister, man. Hey, what's up with this scripture? Da, 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 da. Hey, what you doing? Da, da. You know, this, man, let's get, let's, you know, holy day is coming, right? What could we do? Is there anything we can do to help? This is all these things here. Um, but beyond that, it's more so about your internal thing, your, your own internal walk with the most high. You know, how do you feel about your walk so far? Do you feel complacent? Do you feel that you can do more? Um, are you willing to do more? You know what I mean? These kind of things, you know, the, we we know what it is, man. You know, so the, the, the way I look at it, the more busy I'm, I am in the Father's work, the less time I have to be messed with by the serpent and all these little uh, distractions he throwing from my face. You know what I mean? So, you know, let's, let's get submerged in it, man. Uh, we're going to go to, uh, James four and 17, same book, chapter four, verse 17. Um, it says right here, uh, James four and 17, therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him, it is sin, right? Is, is, is it an unrighteous thing to do the work of the most high? Right. Uh, do we feel that we just going to cruise into this kingdom? Because um, anybody that thinks that I, I must say, please understand, it's not that's not how it works. It's not how it works. Faith without works is dead. You know, we have to really show forth our light and try to brighten it as the day come. All right. So, you know, we need to do what we say. You know, we say that we 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 locking in with the most high, that we're willing to do that work. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Let's go to uh first John three and eighteen. First John three and eighteen. All right. First John three and eighteen, it says right here, my little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Right. Scriptures say, if you love me, keep my commandments. Right. Um, and within that, there's there's different works of the commandments that we have to do. Right. Let's 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 do it. Right. My little children, let us not love in words. So it's not about just what we say. Um, one of my favorite songs, man, love is a verb. Right. It's an action. Let's take action. If we say that we love the most high, let's 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 take action to what we say. Right. You say you love your brethren and your sisters and stuff like that, man. Let, let, let's do it indeed. Right. And not just say it. Right. There's many different things that we can do just to continue to build up each other and strengthen each other. Um, I got a precept here. Oh. All right. One second, y'all. Um, all right, so I'm going to read First John 3 and 17 one more time. Uh, Salakia, uh, uh, 3 and 18. It says, my little children, let us not love in word neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth, right? Uh, I'm going to link that up with uh, Ezekiel 33 and 31. It says, uh, And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them, right? Um, it says, For with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. 
You know what I'm saying? The thing is, is it's not about what we want. It's not about um, uh, what we think or what we feel. It's about what the Most High requires. Okay, and He requires, like He says, the the harvest. Uh, let's say the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Right? Um, let's 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 get in, man. Let's let's do the labor. Let's do the work. You know. And they, again, it doesn't matter what it is. From the smallest to the greatest, it's all towards the same thing. You know, um, got a couple more scriptures, man. It was just a little brush over study, you know what I'm saying, that I wanted to touch on. Um, all in the spirit, man. Let's get a James 1 and 22. And then I got like four more and we'll bring it to a tail end. All right, James 1 and 22, and it reads, um, uh, But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves, right? So it's not, you know, if we say we're doing something and we're not doing it, that's not, we're not fooling nobody but yourself. It's, it's, that's between you and the Father, you know what I mean? And just keep in mind, he he, he witnesses all these things. So, you know, we just want to encourage each other, man. This is this is just a study of encouragement and provoking on the good works. You know what I mean? Let's provoke each other on to good works. Uh, James 2, uh, 1 and 23. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Right? It says, for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way. And straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. So, you know, when we wake up to this thing and the Most High shows us this beautiful truth and then we fall into, you know, uh, um, a place of, of, of con you know, being content. It's like you forgot the beautiful thing that he just, you know, you turned you from, a, from the coal to a diamond and it's almost as if we forgot where we was originally. You know what I mean? How far we've come, the uh, the things that he has shown us, the the afflictions that we felt on this journey. You know what I'm saying? Don't forget how many times he has spared us from from uh, you know many different situations. How many you know? You wake up in the morning, he gave you the breath of life. You know, he called you from the beginning for a reason, right? So, and it's it's, it's to do his work, to do his will. You know. Um, so yeah, be not, be not, uh, hearers, right? Um, so I'm gonna read that straight through, uh, from verse 22, uh, James 1 and 22, uh, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving own, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forget it what manner of man he was, right? Um, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed, right? So that's what we're trying to do. You know, let's lock in to, 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 to be blessed by the Most High. Let's lock in because we fear and love him at the same time, you know? We need to make this thing happen, man. So, uh, I'm going to go to, real quick, uh, Philippians 1 and 5. Philippians 1 and 5. All right. Philippians 1 and 5. It reads right here. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, verse six says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a work in you will perform it until the day of Yeshua Christ. So the work didn't stop. It's supposed to continue all the way through. Right. From the first day until now, from the first day he woke you up until now, we are to put, we, we, we got to continue in this thing. You know, the Bible tells us particular things like 
don't forsake the gathering and stuff like that, right? All these things are are good works towards uh, um, being in a good light with the Most High, right? None of us um, are perfect, right? We striving for perfection, but at the same time, these things are not difficult things that He's telling us not to do, you know, or the things that He tell us to do, you know. Things like don't forsake the gathering. Let's come together. Let's come together. Absolutely. That's uh, Philippians 1 and 5. And I'll read it again. 5 through 6. It says, For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Right? So just like when you first woke up and you was ready to get it, you know, oh man, you know, fell in love with these books and getting the scriptures and man, I didn't know this was here and all of that stuff, man. Listen, working towards the kingdom it can be as simple as just reading your Bible. All of that stuff counts. Why? Because you're studying to show yourself approved. A workman shall not be ashamed, right? So clearly the scripture is telling you that you're still doing work there just by reading the Bible, you know, building up your spirit, building up your edification, your understanding. Why? So that way when you come across a brother or sister who has no clue of, you know, that uh, the lake of fire is real and this stuff is right there. You know, you can edify them, tell them, you know, teach them and show them what the Bible says. You know, transfer the information that the Most High has given on to you onto another person. Fill them up. You know, all praises to the Most High. So uh, Philippians 1 and 5, it says, For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a, a good work in you will perform it until the day of Yeshua Christ. So, you know, just like the Most High is going to continue to work on us, continue to work on yourself as well. You, you always got to meet him halfway. Always got to meet him halfway. And if we're not putting in that work, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, having a job and not doing it and still expecting to get paid. You know what I mean? That's, man, you know. So, you know, we, we, we just got to be locked in, man, and do the work until Christ's return. Keep doing this thing. All right? Um, <clears throat> I got two more. Um, so I'm going to read this one here. This is a, uh, we'll go to the book of Romans. Romans 12 and 1. And there's, a, there's plenty of different scriptures that I could have pulled out on there. But I'm, I'm going to deal with these here, you know, just letting the brothers and sisters know and all those. Uh, and you know what? I do want to say this, too, man. You know, the Bible tells us to pray, pray without ceasing. You know, um, we should be praying um, at least three times a day. Sometimes you might miss a prayer. You know, let's let's just continue to work on these things. Right. Let's continue to obtain righteous discipline as the days go. Right, get better at at, at being a believer, at, at um, uh, being a light onto the world that the Most High called us to be, right? But I'll say this: um, a good thing to pray for, man. And I, I, you know, that's something that I have incorporated incorporated in my prayers lately, and I've been seeing the fruits of it. And I'm gonna just pass it along. A good thing to pray for as well. And if you if you disagree, that's fine too. But a good thing to pray for is to ask the Most High to let, when you speak to people through the oracles of God, to allow your words to be edifying or understand, or easy to understand. That's a very good thing to pray for. And like the Bible says, if it's something that's within his will and is a righteous deed, he will grant it on to you. Beautiful thing to pray for, you know what I mean. Um, another brother, uh, brother Ra'ah, brought up uh, asking asking Christ to pray for us to the Most High. That's a beautiful thing too, you know. Um, but all of these things, even prayer, all of these things count as you know good works. You know what I mean. What I'm trying to say is, man, we let, let's 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 Raise up a, a beautiful noise onto the Most High, man, together. You know, let's strengthen ourselves together. Let's let's strengthen ourselves first, 
right? Break free from all these things that keep us from doing the work. If there's something that's blocking you from pushing forward towards the most high, move it out your way for a week. Or I'll tell you what, destroy it from before your face and watch the change super fast. I promise you, you you will see whatever it is. And a lot of times we know what it is that's keeping us back. We know whether and a lot of times it's something else that we may like or enjoy doing. I promise you, if 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 it's not towards building the kingdom beautifully and strong uh, with with the strength that the most High has given us, remove it from in front of you, destroy whatever it is and see what happens, how much more free time you have to lock in with the work and you will see a, a beautiful, beautiful thing. Uh, take part before your face. You know what I mean? So I'm putting that out there, man. So we're going to read Romans 1 and 2. Uh, Salakia, Romans 12 and 1. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the, our power, a higher, that you present your bodies as li- uh, your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the most high, a higher, which is your reasonable service. So it is our service, our duty to do this. If your body is the temple of the Most High, we are to use our bodies and everything that he has given us towards the kingdom and not be sluggers in this movement, not be, uh, uh, you know, lazy when it comes to the Most High's work. You know? We have to, man, I, I, again, I, I just want us to do better, man, as a people. Let's, let's, let's really be more cohesive, you know, and anybody that's content with not even knowing the most high, I feel for you. And I'm going to tell you right now on this broadcast, please understand that salvation is at hand. It is high time. You need to turn back to the most high, lock in on his laws and commandments, seek out his face. Repent and ask that he becomes a, a, a moving force in your life. You know what I mean? That's, man, the whole duty of man, right? Keep the commandments, man. We have to keep these commandments. That's the thing that will spare you from the day of judgment. You know what I mean? Preach the truth onto those people, man. You know, speak the truth onto the captives of the earth. All right? Um, so I'm going to get back to Romans 12. And one, I beseech you, brethren, there, uh, I, Salaki, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Ahiah, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto Ahiah, which is your reasonable service. This is your reasonable service. And be not confirmed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So if we're saying that we're on a spiritual vibration, we should be our mind should be locked on spiritual things. Our actions should bring spiritual fruit. We should be entangled in the spiritual work, right? And be not confirmed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of a higher. Very clear. You know what I'm saying? So we have to prove what is good. Right? Prove all things. How do you do that? You do it through action. You know? So um, last but not least, I'm going to read this scripture right here. And, um, you know, after this, um, I'm going to and this broadcast, but again, just some words of encouragement to all those that um, really want to do better, right? And we need to be um, better as a people. I want, you know, I if I'm going off, I, I need I need my brother and my sister to be there to to like, hey man, you know. I seen such and such, you know, you know, da 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 da. Just a simple conversation could go a long way. You know what I mean? But if we're not even available to our brother or sister, you know, it's a domino effect. You know what I mean? 
So, you know, just just being active in all areas of of righteousness goes a long way. You know. So, I'm going to go to Matthew 25 and 14. <clears throat> and it reads, red letter. It says, "For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered um, onto them his goods. So the Most High allowed his, his son to come down here and allow us to receive this truth, the Gospels. Um, you know, the Most High gave us his holy word. Um, we are in uh, Matthew 25 and 14, right? He gave us this, this, this beautiful fruit that we are salaki. He gave us these beautiful seeds that we are to plant. To increase the harvest. Okay. Seeds don't belong to none of us. But the most high. All he told us to do. Is make sure that we plant as, as much as we can. Right. And every seed. Is of a different tree. So you might have the seed of. Uh, awakening people. Um, with scriptures. You might have a seed of assembling people. Another might have a seed of. 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 Um, you know, um, anything, I, uh, just posting the truth, um, dealing with this, uh, brothers or their sisters in a certain way. Everybody might have a, there's a whole bunch of seeds, which is going to produce different trees, but it's all one garden, right? So I'm going to read this again, Matthew 25 and 14 for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. So he delivered us this truth, this beautiful work. Verse 15. And unto one he gave five talents. And to another, Salakia, to another, two. And to another, one. To every man according to his several, uh, several ability and straightway took his journey. So he gave us a job to do and left so he could deal with some other things and he will return. Right? So oh, he, we just got to plant these things in the garden. So when he come back, it's a beautiful garden, full and ready. You know what I'm saying? What we don't want is when he returned, we got a bag full of seeds. And we was like, yeah, man. Um, you know, I just threw a couple on the ground, man. I, you know, I was going to get back to it. But I had to deal with this real quick. You know what I mean? I, I had something that I had to do for myself real fast. You know what I mean? I know that you gave me these seeds and I'm going to get to it when I, you know. They, trust me, none of us is going to say that to the most high. Even those that don't believe, uh, you got people in the world that, you know, call themselves atheists and all that, you know, because they don't believe in God. But in reality, they still believe in God because they're putting themselves in his seat. So it, it sounds crazy to me when atheists say they don't believe. You believe in yourself and you're putting yourself as a God. But that's a whole nother thing. Back on track, the most high gave us these seeds, we got to plant them in his garden. That's the work. Verse 16, Matthew 25, 16. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them five, uh, uh, made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained an, uh, other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. Um, and I love this parable for the simple fact too. When we wake up and are no longer sleeping, we have to really be trying to not, the, the, the scriptures tell us very clearly to, uh, get your house in order first, right? So that's why I said earlier just as simple as reading the scriptures is work. It is work. It's work because you're working on yourself, which you have to work on yourself. And that's a that is a continual thing. It does not stop. This whole walk is about obtaining righteous discipline. That's what this whole thing is about. And when we obtain these disciplines, we apply it to our lives. Right. You talk about knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Well, knowledge is knowing what you got to do. 
right? Understanding is applying that knowledge into work. And by applying that knowledge into work, it shows wisdom in that area. It's a threefold thing. And we have to build on this. And by the time we work on ourselves, we allow to we able to talk to other people and light their candle too. You know what I'm saying? All praises to the Father, man. But we cannot be sluggers with this thing, man, because he will return. Asking us, what did we do with these seeds? And if you got a whole bag of seeds in, in your closet and haven't been spreading them, so when the, the springtime come, the harvest is full, what you going to say to the most high? You know what I'm saying? He that endure to the end shall be saved. Right? Not just he that is awoke. You know what I mean? You, you just awake and, you know, we we don't fellowship. None of that stuff like that stuff is off. You know what I mean? We got to make ourselves strong as possible and as rooted as possible with Christ. So that way, when when the wind blows, we're not uprooted so easily. You know, you're able to discern and stuff like that, you know. So anyway, it's, it's many different areas of the work, man, and we just need to be touching all aspects of it. Um. So I'm going to just read this straight through, right? Um, where we at here? Uh, verse 19, Matthew 25 and 19. After a long time, the Lord of the serv of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. So reckoneth is like a questioning or to be brought into remembrance or to remind, right? Uh, reckoneth with them. <clears throat> and he said, and so, Salaki, and so he, he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. Right? He's, he, he made that harvest swole. Um, verse 21. He said unto him, Well done, thou, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Right? Pleased with him. For doing the most high's work. Verse 22. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the, the joy of thy Lord. Right? Look here, look how important this work is. Just working towards the kingdom is a very important thing, right? Verse 24. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art um, a hard man reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not stowed or strode. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. And lo, thou has that is thine. Right? So it says, um, his Lord answered and said unto him, thou wicked and slothful servant. Thou knewest that I reap where I sow not and gather where I have not strove. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money into the, uh, to the exchangers and then at my coming, should I have received my own with you, with usury? Take therefore the talent from him and give it on to him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall um, for Salakia, for unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. Um, and cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. We all have to work towards these, uh, you know, to, to greatness, man, towards perfection, <clears throat> towards, um, you know, salvation in every aspect. You know what I mean? And I'm, 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 I'm saying this because we all have to. Be versatile in whatever it is we're doing on to the kingdom. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, be a good fruit. 
you know, sow these seeds, spread them. You know, we don't want to be uh, considered slothful before God. Okay. Um, we know what he requires. We understand the whole duty of man. And um, that's that's where we need to be with it. You know, so I just want to uh, say all praises to the Most High for that, for allowing us to come together and talk about these things. And I'm going to just leave it on this note. Right. Um, let us hear the whole conclusion, the conclusion of the whole matter, Salakia. Fear higher and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. When you're talking about duty, that's letting us know we have a job. And within that, that, that one scripture is the whole truth of what we need to be doing. Everything that we can possibly do. On to the most high. All right. Um, you know, with that, man, I just want to wish everybody um, that's, you know, striving for this kingdom and for this crown of life. Um, I just want to say shalom to all of y'all, everybody that, you know, has the fear of God and trying to get keep that spark you want to keep that spark, man. Remove the things that are, 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 are keeping you from him. And I promise you, you'll see how fast you gravitate and start running even harder than you ever ran. I'm telling you, you will get back to your first love that way. You know, um, so, you know, a workman need not be ashamed. Study to show yourself approved. Do not become content. That should be a warning sign. For ourselves, Shabbat Shalom. Um, you know, love all those that are um, love the Most High, man, and love your enemies, even though they may not love you. Strive for the best, and um, want to wish everybody Godspeed. Um, Shabbat Shalom, and uh, I'm gonna go on the conference line for any Q and A or whatever the case is, any comments and so forth. So, um, Shabbat Shalom.